So you're there lying in bed, waiting to fall asleep. You close your eyes, but what do you see? Nothing really. A dark black gray inky swirl of abstract shapes. Some seem to move, but none of which take any meaningful form. Then out of nowhere, suddenly you're dreaming. You're seeing vivid, defined forms and colors. Scenes that fill your senses with sound, smells, and your mind with emotions. Some of which are happy and exciting. Some terrifying and some downright bizarre. Dreams can morph from one thing to the next. You generally do not remember starting to dream or falling into that dream state, and you will most likely not remember the dream upon awakening. We all dream every night when we sleep. The average time a person spends sleeping in a lifetime is 26 years. and another seven years just trying to fall asleep. Our brains are active throughout the night and after we wake up, we often don't remember much about our dreams. In this video, I will explore sleep and most importantly, dreams. So why do we dream? One widely held theory about the purpose of dreams is that they help you store important memories and things you've learned. They help sort through complicated thoughts and feelings. Research shows that sleep helps you store memories. Dreams may help the brain more efficiently store important information while blocking out stimuli that could interfere with memory and learning. We dream most vividly during rapid eye movement, known as REM sleep. REM sleep occurs in short episodes across the night at about 90 minutes apart. Our longer dreams are in the morning hours. We are especially wired not to act out in our dreams. During REM sleep, many of our muscles relax completely and this prevents us from acting out our dreams. If this system doesn't work properly, we may try to act out our dreams, especially if the dreams involve strong emotions. Many dreams are bizarre because of the part of our brain that shuts down. When we are awake, the front part of our brain, the cerebrum, controls how we make sense of the world. This shuts down during dreaming. Because of this, the dreaming brain puts together ideas that normally do not go together. About two-thirds of dreams are mainly visual, with fewer that involve sounds, movement, taste, or smell. Color is only about one-third of all dreams. It has been said that when we are awake, we think in ideas, but when we sleep, we think in pictures. Many people have bad dreams or nightmares, these can happen over and over again, but people can change the events in these dreams to be less frightening. First, write down memories of the scary or disturbing dream. Create and maintain a dream journal. After this, think about how it might end differently. We can learn to control our dreams. There is something called lucid dreaming and one can learn how to achieve this with some training and practice. However, I will save that for a more in-depth video later on. From new evidence and new research methodologies, researchers have speculated that dreaming serves the following functions. Number one, cognitive simulation of real-life experiences as dreaming is a subsystem of the waking default network. The part of the mind active during daydreaming helped develop capabilities reflecting the unconscious in a psychoanalytic way. Number two, a unique state of consciousness 
that incorporates experience of the present, processing of the past, and a preparation for the future. Number three, a psychological space where overwhelming, contradictory, or highly complex notions can be brought together by the dreaming ego, notions that would be unsettling while awake, serving the need for psychological balance and equilibrium. There are five stages of sleep in a sleep cycle. Stage one, light sleep, slow eye movement, and reduced muscle activity. This stage forms four to five percent of total sleep. Stage two, eye movement stops and brain waves become slower with occasional bursts of rapid waves called sleep spindles. This stage forms 45 to 55 percent of total sleep. Stage three, extremely slow brain waves called delta waves begin to appear interspersed with smaller faster waves this accounts for four to six percent of total sleep and stage four the brain produces delta waves almost exclusively it is difficult to wake someone during stage three and four which together i'll call deep sleep there is no eye movement or muscle activity people awaken while in deep sleep do not adjust immediately and often feel disoriented for several minutes after waking up. This forms 12 to 15 percent of total sleep. Stage 5. This stage is known as rapid eye movement, REM sleep. Breathing becomes more rapid, irregular and shallow. Eyes jerk rapidly in various directions and limb muscles become temporarily paralyzed. Heart rate increases when people awaken during REM sleep, they often describe bizarre and illogical tales. These are dreams. This stage accounts for 20 to 25% of total sleep time. Much remains unknown about dreams. They are by nature difficult to study in a laboratory, but technology and new research techniques may help improve our understanding of dreams. There are some that say dreams mean nothing. They say that we have them only because parts of our brain are stimulated when we sleep. Other people say dreams have value. They say it's a kind of therapy for when we're feeling down or need to find an answer to something that's bothering us. Having and remembering vivid dreams about stressful things in our lives may help us deal with stress. Many people think that dreams contain messages Perhaps they do, if we are willing to listen. Follow this video series for more insight into dreams and lucid dreaming. If you like my videos, feel free to comment, subscribe, share, and hit that like button. Alright?